into Germany. Invest in your Wirtschaftswunder. Hello and a very warm welcome to episode two of our monthly German business podcast, Into Germany. It's brought to you by Germany Trade and Invest, GTAI, the German government's international business promotion agency. I'm Kelly O'Brien, and today we go to the very heart of German industry and examine how the automotive sector prepares for the era of e-mobility. We'll talk to a man who convinced the biggest battery supplier of the world to come to Germany to a chemist who is working on the future generation of battery cells in Münster. And our GTAI car expert, Stefan D. Bitonto, tells us how the German government intends to remain the world's number one car manufacturer. But wait, wasn't Germany the nation that stuck to combustion engine cars when everybody else already ran for electric cars? To be honest, yes. Germany started late into e-mobility, but as you know, once Germans decide to commit themselves to something new, they go all the way. To give you just a few figures, 3.1 million passenger cars were made in Germany in 2021, the most in Europe. And more and more of them are electric. The number of EVs on German streets is expected to rise from today 1 million to 15 million in 2030. For that, manufacturers and suppliers will invest over 220 billion euros in electric mobility and digitalization within the next four years. That's attracted attention as far away as China. Let's meet Matthias Zentgraf. Matthias himself has a background within the conventional car industry. As a mechanical engineer, he worked in combustion engines and turbo machines. In 2015, he switched to e-mobility and convinced CATL, the world's leading lithium battery supplier from China, to open their very first overseas production site in Germany in 2018. At this point of time, a lot of companies, there were multiple different suppliers for lithium-ion batteries in automotive application. And CATL decided to join this European market because it's uh, for the worldwide expansion is very important. And we had 15 or 17 potential locations in evaluation. But the preference of my bosses in China was Eastern Europe. And I talked to my boss asking him to reconsider a location in the middle of Europe. At this point of time, in Western Europe, I call it, there was no large-scale manufacturing site for lithium-ion batteries. There were one in Poland and one in Hungary and one smaller one in UK. But big size volume production of lithium-ion batteries, not. So, and uh, yeah, making a long story short, finally I convinced, or I could convince my boss with arguments to take the decision for Erfurt Kreuz in, in Thuringia. This was uh, officially announced in 2018, in July, also with the ceremony in the Bundeskanzleramt yeah, in front of Mrs. Merkel and Mr. Li Keyang. Mr. Tiefensee, my boss, Dr. Robin Seng, signed the agreement to build a battery plant in, in Erfurt area. CATL took over a 200,000 square meter former solar panel facility factory. Today, 800 people work there and serial production is about to start. We will invest up to 1.8 billion euros and there will be up to 2,000 jobs will be created. And the annual production capacity based on the current decision will next year achieve, depends also on the market. So up to 14, 15 gigawatt hour per annum. Why would the Chinese open such a production site in Europe? Why not just continue shipping the batteries? Currently, we're already shipping to our customers, but these products are mainly produced in China. But in a, with the start of our cell production, this will start to change. Because why we do need this local production here? Because of the requirement of local content in the automotive vehicle industry. 
If you would be an automotive manufacturer and would like to sell your, your cars to, for example, UK or Switzerland, if you will not fulfill 60% local content, you have to pay an additional tax on this. And if you look into a battery electric vehicle, the main content or the biggest value creation of such a vehicle is the battery. So that's why the whole industry is looking to get these batteries produced in Europe or in European Union. And what is additionally coming on top of this is also that you have to attract or define and enable sub-suppliers for components or materials to also produce in the European Union. So this is more or less a part of the jobs we are, we are doing right now. It was a bold first move by the Chinese back then, and others have followed suit. This was a very wise decision, if you see, or if you double-check. In 2018, the feedback was Germany too expensive to build such batteries over here. And in the Western Hemisphere of Europe, there was no big-scale battery uh, manufacturing site. After our decision, the first company was the other Chinese company who announced to open up a plant in Bitterfeld, Wolfen. Yeah? And meanwhile, you have 10 or 15 announcements of battery plants in the western side of Europe. North was the, the, the Swedish guy were after us, yeah? and also some French and some cooperations between French and Germans. And other Chinese companies, they meanwhile announced to produce in Western Europe, also in Germany. This wasn't the case before we made the announcement. Yeah? That's why we're also a little bit proud about this, to be an icebreaker in this, to bring this technology and this value creation here into this country. It may have taken a Chinese company to break the ice, but German car manufacturers like BMW, Mercedes and Volkswagen see EVs as the future and want parts made close to home. You will see a lot of new electric vehicle models out of these factories of the German car OEMs. And uh, from their experience from 100 years or something in automotive, they can transfer this experience, which is not to the power chain related, yeah, but to the infotainment and vehicle driving behavior and uh, quality aspects, they will transfer this to the, the, the e-mobility as well. Yeah. So I think they started a little bit later, except one Bavarian company. The electric front runner he is talking about here is BMW. But the others are all on track now to focus on e-mobility in minimum for 50% of their volume in 2030. They are pushing the battery cell business. When they bring an electric vehicle into market, you can expect that they will bring new technology in the quality you know from these companies out of the last years as a quality behavior of the vehicles. And there, Matthias sees big opportunities for his company and others, because the car industry needs partners as CATL and their battery cells. Lots and lots of battery cells. And CATL has already proven that it masters mass production. In the first half of 2022, we delivered around about 71 gigawatt hour. So, and if you consider average one battery has between 60 and 70 kilowatt hours. Kilowatt, megawatt, gigawatt. Yeah? So it's a little bit like mathematics. What did I say? 70. So one, one million roundabout. Only in one half year. More than 71 million battery cells produced, shipped and sold within half a year. That is quite a number. So taking it from the global leader, what's the state of the art regarding battery cells? The technology we are producing currently, yeah, so it's called NMC. What does NMC stands for? is nickel, cobalt, manganese. And the other technology is LFP, it's lithium-ion phosphate. There are two different battery, lithium-ion battery types, yeah. NMC is currently the only one technology which is available for the automotive market. Automotive, you're talking 
the vehicle you could run at minus 30 degree in Sweden or north of Sweden, but also in plus 60 degree yeah, or 50 degree somewhere in, in South Europe or in, in North Africa. Yeah. All this requirement need to be fulfilled in this technology. NMC can do it together with uh, active cooling in the battery. NMC delivers the current expectation for energy density, means driving range. NMC technology can deliver the lowest uh, recharging time composition. All these requirements of the final customers currently is with NMC technology. And therefore, worldwide, the industry starts to install production capacities. As we'll hear later in this podcast, scientists are looking into other very promising technologies which could be a game changer sometime, like organic batteries using vegetables. But before that, let's take a break to look at some important bits of business news from Germany in recent weeks. Ammonia. It's a crucial element in the scale-up of the hydrogen economy and Germany needs to bring in lots of it. So the country is building its first terminal for imported green ammonia in the northern city of Hamburg. Three private companies will be involved in constructing and running the facility, which will receive environmentally produced ammonia from Saudi Arabia. It will go operational in 2026. Back on track. The American Chamber of Commerce in Germany says that business between the two countries has fully recovered from COVID restrictions. That's according to the group's annual survey of the top 50 US companies in Europe's largest economy. 65% of US companies in Germany expect revenue to increase in 2022, but the study also pointed out areas for improvement, such as reduced bureaucracy and increased digitalization, including cloud and quantum computing. Commerce in the clouds. Speaking of computing, quantum computers can be too expensive for businesses to use. To give companies access to this key future technology, the German government is investing tens of millions in a platform called Sequence. It's been created by software company QMware, cloud specialist Ionis, the University of Stuttgart and the Fraunhofer Focus Research Institute. Germany has pledged to put a total of 740 million euros into quantum computing in general. Autumn leaves. Every autumn, sanitation services sweep up 36,000 tonnes of leaves from streets and parks in Berlin. A new study by the Leibniz Institute for Agrarian Technology, Bioeconomy, says this mass of dead material could be used to produce biogas. The institute estimates that the electricity produced from fallen foliage could cover the annual electricity needs of some 5,000 residents in the German capital. And finally, tenders to come. Germany has a new 70-point master plan for dramatically expanding its electric vehicle charging network. The focus is on rapid charging stations in highly populated areas and on highways. The plan also mandates that the charging infrastructures be systematically integrated in the electrical grid. A number of tenders to this end will be issued next year. Germany is targeting 1 million charging stations for 15 million fully electric vehicles by the year 2030. Here we are, back at our main topic, e-mobility. To be clear, we're talking about 15 million electric cars, not hybrid, not plug-ins, but pure electric cars by 2030. At the same time, the German government is cutting back current incentives. So let's ask our colleague at Germany Trade and Invest, Stefan Di Bitonto, if he can make any sense out of this. Right, they are cutting back on that. We're going to have to go back in time a little bit because before the COVID pandemic, we had 6,000 euros of public funds for buying an electric, a fully electric vehicle. And the minute that government saw that the um, 
demand is going to fall due to the uh, pandemic, they've put in another 3,000 euros for each electric vehicle that was purchased. So it went up all the way to 9,000 euros. So now they're just going back to the level that we had before COVID, so pre-pandemic levels uh, when it comes to incentives. So Stefan, will the car industry be up to the job? So in seven years, 15 million vehicles, that means almost 15-fold of the cars that we have right now in electric vehicles on German streets. I would say, you know, I would say yes, I think they are prepared. Uh, The industry has pretty much understood that this is the path that we're going to go in the future. And we're also seeing battery manufacturers coming into Germany to, you know, make sure that these OEMs are going to have, you know, the batteries that they need, that they're demanding for. So I do really do think that that the OEMs are going to be able to deliver. You know, what the question really remains is, are we going to have the infrastructure that we're going to need in seven or in 10 years? Uh, that's going to be very crucial. The government is investing a total of 2.5 billion euros in public charging infrastructure. Will it be enough? Infrastructure, obviously, is, is an important issue and investors... Um, all over the world that have know-how in charging stations and and know how to approach this issue. Uh, They're very welcome to join the Electric Mobility Party here in Germany, as I want to call it. It's a party to which everyone is invited. Well, I think the technology is available in Germany, and we do have a a great research and development infrastructure in Germany and, you know, very well renowned universities and, and professors that are, you know, very known when it comes to batteries and, and chemistry and materials. I think we're, where, where we need a little bit of help is on producing uh, these batteries in, in a mass uh, production way. And that's where these investors are stepping in right now. And, and we're most likely going to see more of that in the future just because, Germany is the the heartland of the automotive industry in Europe. So we have the highest new car registration in Europe, and we also have the highest production in units in Germany when we compare it with other countries in uh, in Europe. So, you know, it makes sense for these companies to join in and to deliver the parts and the batteries that are needed in the future. They're not going to get less, just going to be more batteries in the future. Why is R&D so important? The reason is simple. Battery technology is the crux of widespread acceptance of e-mobility. If an electric car doesn't get you all the way to your destination, you won't be happy. If the battery catches fire, you won't ever buy an EV again. That's why both the state and the car manufacturers in Germany are putting such massive money into the development of high-energy and high-performance battery systems. One main regional cluster is situated in Münster, So let's talk now to Professor Martin Winter, a chemist and head of the battery research centre, MEET. Here, scientists work on higher energy density, longer lifetime, safety, sustainability, and, also important, how to bring down the costs. So Martin, Germany started out late. Other countries are way ahead. Can we catch up? And uh, battery cells is a very cost-intensive product. It's a very energy intensive product, but at the end, who is governing the battery cells, who is able to make very good battery cells, can differentiate because the battery cells contain the highest cost of the battery because they contain the materials, both for the electrochemistry, but also for the cell itself. And uh, for this reason, having the uh, battery cells or having knowledge in battery cell making is extremely important. If you want to have an economy which is relying on resilience, on autonomy, then you have to cover the full value chain, and this also includes battery cells. Are we strong in battery cells? I think we are in the stage of becoming strong. But we are not strong at the moment, but in the future, I think we will become strong because there's a lot of effort and money put into this. Besides money and subsidies, what makes Germany interesting as a country for investors? We have a stable political system. And I think there are a couple of other countries on this world where this is not the case or it is already changing. So I think that an investment in Germany is a safe investment. So you can have, you have security in law, you have security in the government. There's no equivalent of Harvard, MIT, Oxford or Cambridge in Germany. Can it compete? 
I think there is a fairness also in Germany, which I think many other countries would like to have too. Our universities have a very high level of education. It's not like in other countries that they are very, very, very excellent universities and not so good ones. I think in average, we have a very nice level of education. And this on all levels, not only university, but also for education, apprenticeship, you know, Ausbildung. It is something which is we have in Germany, which many other countries don't have. So we have the dual education system. That is very, very important. So good people. We realize that a couple of companies who have started production in Eastern Europe have found difficulties to find good personnel. Because at the end, making battery cells is something where you need educated stuff. And um, this is something uh, not every country can provide. Then we have also a very nice infrastructure when it comes to academic research. We were latecomer in academic research in batteries in Germany. But let's say since 2005, six incentives were started, which have become materialized after 2009-10. And that means more than 10 years now, we have established a very broad research landscape, which is very, very competitive. There are many countries who want to cooperate with us because we have leading positions in research and we can be very proud of this. And this is something which I think makes it very interesting for also developers in the industry to work with us. What are you tinkering with in your labs in Münster? At the moment, everybody wants a high-performance, cheap battery. High-performance means you have to use metals and cheap means you have to take it from Asia because they use coal electricity, which is much cheaper than any other electricity to make batteries. Batteries, as many other things that we are using today, are depending on critical raw materials. Okay? Batteries are using lithium. Ten years ago, 2% of the lithium went into batteries. Now more than 60% of the lithium goes into batteries. That means lithium does not only go into batteries, but it also goes into batteries. And it's increasing because this is a very big thing for lithium. Nickel, for example, goes into steel, but also 5% go into batteries. So and this will increase. The share of this um, uh, use of nickel will increase. And we have to think about how do we address this. We have to look for alternative chemistries. Lithium-free and also free of other critical materials. And in the next step, maybe greener and greener. So using green materials, using mm. carbons that have been derived from biomass. And what's this we heard about growing batteries from vegetables? It has to do with graphite, right? Graphite is made from biomass. Okay, it's really, it's, you are using natural precursors for making graphite. So it's not nothing new. It's simply that we have to maybe plant also certain vegetables or certain plants. You have to put them on the field that in the future we can use them as our starting material for the graphite. This is possible. We are doing this here in our lab and many others do it too. The aim is clear. Martin Winter wants to get away from metals and critical raw materials. And then there's a very big topic now, access to raw materials. This is a critical question. Maybe the future of batteries can be put into two simple words. No metals, no metals, no metals, no metals, OK? And with this, we're reaching the end of our podcast. But we won't let you go without giving you more insight into how Germany works. When we were talking earlier on, we mentioned state subsidies, which may have made you do a double take. Subsidies sometimes are controversial, but they're an instrument the German government uses on occasion to influence consumer behaviour and advance political goals. A carrot, not a stick. Much like the Cash for Clunkers programme in the US during the finance crisis of 2008. The support for EVs in Germany is a great example. Government incentives were matched by money from car makers, and they succeeded in jump-starting the EV market in Germany. State subsidies are also employed for other sectors, for instance, heating. They stimulate markets and create business opportunities. That's why it pays for international companies to be aware of them. Thanks for listening. If we've piqued your curiosity about bringing your business to Germany, remember Germany Trade and Invest can help you do just that. GTAI is a government agency, so all services are free and confidential. Get in touch at gtai.com. We're also keen on your opinions, suggestions and questions. Please leave a comment in your favourite podcast app or drop us a line. You'll find all the details in our show notes. And if you want to know more about Germany's growing hydrogen economy, you might want to check out episode one. Till next month, 
Auf Wiederhören. And remember, Germany means business. <lacht>